webinar about a very, very important topic that has been in the news. It's been on, uh, it's been on the president's uh, desk. And we're happy to have with us a person who has been involved in this type of issue for some time. But before we get started, uh, this is being sponsored by the American School Health Association. I'm not going to read the slides that are up there. I'm Larry Olson. I've been a member of American School Health Association since 1965 and uh, have been attending meetings every year since then. Uh, I want to make sure that you know that our next meeting will be October 2nd to 4th in Cincinnati. And I hope that you will make plans to attend that particular meeting. We also have an upcoming webinar on the 26th of this month dealing with publishing in the Journal of School Health, and that will be also at 3 o'clock uh, Eastern time. There is continuing education credit for these particular webinars, and I think on your screen you can see some of the membership benefits of belonging to the American School Health Association. Major things include receipt of the Journal of School Health, you get information and expertise with access to latest in school health through the conference, newsletters, and various networking communities that we have. We offer continuing education, for example, at this meeting and also at our annual meeting. We have a career center. And something that is really pretty nice is the fact that all those who belong to the American School Health Association get a discount from the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, in relationship to all AAP publications. It's 15% and that can really add up to a lot. So this being said, today's presenter is uh, Marcella Bianco. And Marcella is the program director for the Catch My Breath program home offices located in Austin, Texas. She is responsible for managing and disseminating this particular program in states across the nation. She has over 14 years of tobacco prevention work experience, and she's built relationships with local, state, and national partners to change policy and social norms around tobacco. In 2005, she worked for the Floridians for Youth Tobacco Education and passed Amendment 4, which restored funding for statewide tobacco prevention, a very important piece of legislation. For nine years, she worked for the Florida Department of Health in St. Lucie County as a tobacco prevention manager. And in 2015, she continued her work, sounds like a passion to me, in the area of tobacco prevention as the Tobacco Prevention Program Director for the state of Tennessee. At this point, I will turn it over to Marcella. Okay, I am going to try to share my screen. And I'm also going to add, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we'll make sure to get to those. All right, can everybody see my screen? Okay. We can see it, Caitlin and Larry. Yes, I think I've been muted. You've all been muted. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and hopefully you guys can all see that. Yeah, we can. So, okay, perfect, thank you. Just wanted that clarification before going yeah. forward. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for joining today's call. Um, again, I'm Marcel Bianco, I'm the program director for the Catch My Breast program. Um, thank you for being here on this very important topic as we um, are able to offer a prevention program that you can use in your schools that's um, free across the nation. So when we get started, I just wanna go over some um, basic words to know. Um, usually when we talk about e-cigarettes and jewels, sometimes people don't understand the language that I use in the, in the presentation. So basically an e-cigarette, it's an electronic device containing usually nicotine-based um, liquid that is vaporized and inhaled. Um, vaping, which is the action or practice of inhaling um, or exhaling vapor produced by an e-cigarette or a similar device. Juul is a popular e-cigarette. So when I say Juul is an e-cigarette, so when I say anything regarding to Juul or e-cigarette throughout this presentation, if I say e-cigarette, I do include Juul. If you can think of it this way, Juul is the iPhone of e-cigarette. So Juuling is the slang term um, that's used for youth and young adults who use their Juul. They don't consider themselves doing an e-cigarette or vaping, they consider themselves juuling. And the Juul Pod is the cartridge that contains the e-juice for the Juul. Nicotine, which we all know at this time, but it's a toxic colors yellowish oil liquid that's the chief constituent of tobacco. 
Um, we know that it's also used in incesticides. Um, vapor, which is a substance diffused or suspended in the air, um, especially one normally liquid or solid. And then an aerosol, which we're going to talk about the both of these a little while later in our presentation, the difference between vapor and aerosol, and what is it that comes out of an e-cigarette, and what is that called? An aerosol is a substance enclosed under pressure and able to be released as a fine spray, usually as a by means of a propellant gas. And then e-juice is another term used for the e-liquid that's in an e-cigarette or jewel pod. And then if I say combustible tobacco, I'm just talking about your basic um, cigarette, a uh, type of tobacco that can be um, lit and burnt. So were we winning the battle on e-cigarette and tobacco product use? Um, tobacco as a whole, we were reducing tobacco products. We had done a great job, those in public health and health education, tobacco prevention control, um, and all of you out in the field to reduce tobacco use among our youth population to record lows across the nation. Um, for the first time in a very long time, we saw an increase in that usage rate um, in, in high school and in middle school. And we do believe that was um, because of the um, e-cigarette and dual pop popularity. So the considering the youth vaping epidemic, it's something you've heard. It is an epidemic amongst our youth. Um, if you're in a school and you don't think it's there, um, it is happening. It's happening in all schools across the country. Um, we have a 78% increase from 2017 to 2018 among high school students and a 48% increase among middle school students from 2017 to 2018. Um, this is a huge spike in one year, equaling 1.5 million more young adults using an e-cigarette um, in one year's time, from 2017 to 2018. So as we discussed, you know, looking at some of the data, well, what is the big difference? What happened over this one year time to raise these um, e-cigarette rates and these usage rates so high? One of the things we do believe is that um, when CDC administers the uh, National Youth Tobacco Survey, that's done in the spring. So that was administered in the spring of 2017. Um, in the spring of 2017, Juul, if you remember the words Juul and Juuling, that was not a thing back then. It was not even anything that you thought of or that became a popular terminology to be they were jeweling. So um, that was not an issue. The word jeweling and jewel was not on that, that data report. But in 2018, when jewel started to become the most popular e-cigarette in January of last year, when CDC put out that survey, they added those words jewel and jeweling. Because remember, young adults who are using Jewel don't consider themselves vaping or using an e-cigarette, they consider themselves jeweling. So when we added the words jewel and jeweling to that survey, now we're seeing the huge um, spike in e-cigarette rates um, in one year's time. Unfortunately, those in public health think that probably this rate is still gonna go up a little bit when we look at the 2019 data. Um, that is yet to be, sold, uh, be told, but considering the high rates, we are in a vaping epidemic amongst our youth. So I get asked this a lot, when should prevention begin? Um, when should we even start? So according to this document, you know, the research shows that prevention should start the year before initiation. So according to this chart um, from CDC, if we have 11% of sixth graders that are using an e-cigarette, have ever used an e-cigarette or a Juul, um, then this chart represents that prevention should start in fifth grade. At this time, um, we don't have a national database set for elementary usage of e-cigarettes and Juul. And you may say, oh, wow, that sounds scary. Are they using it that young? Um, unfortunately, yes, they are. We get asked um, almost daily for an elementary program for prevention for e-cigarettes and Juul. But according to this chart, we know that it should start in fifth grade. But if we can take a look at the data, if 11% of sixth graders are using and have ever tried an e-cigarette, we know that fifth grade is not at zero. So it probably needs to even be younger than that. Um, I am excited to announce that we are right now in the process of developing an elementary program for um, e-cigarette and jewel prevention. Uh, and we plan on rolling this out in the um, fall for next year's, um, next year's school term. So be on the lookout for that if you're interested in an elementary prevention program. So we know that the data starts to show, this is from the National Institute on Drug Abuse, that youth who use an e-cigarette or Juul are over 30% more likely to use a combustible tobacco product within six months. That means they're more likely to go to a cigarette 
um, w um, within six months of using their e-cigarette or Juul. This is partly, in fact, too, why we start to see the tobacco rates increase that we saw in one of the first slides that I presented to you all today. And what's in their e-cigarette? Well, you know, 66% of the youth think it's just flavoring. Um, a lot of them don't know. I had a teacher last year who's very um, asked me several times that their their youth are just doing um, water and flavoring. Um, they don't know that it contains the other chemicals, the, the propylene glycol, the diceatol, the nicotine that's in there. Um, and all Juul contain nicotine, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But I want you to do be aware that if a young adult comes in and says, "Oh, I'm doing a Juul, and does that doesn't have any nicotine," all Juul contains nicotine. So they are playing, e-cigarette companies are playing Big Tobacco's playbook all over again. Things that they've done from, from years and the success rate that the tobacco industry had. Featuring glamorous women, if you remember, You've Come a Long Way Baby by Virginia Slim. Um, well, Blue is now doing the same thing by using glamorous women in magazines and in advertisements. Using celebrity spokespeople. Um, the tobacco industry was great with doing that. Um, they used the doctors and physicians and Lucille Ball and Ronald Reagan and many actors and actresses um, to promote their products. Um, E-cigarette companies are doing the same thing. And let's not forget about the Marlboro Man. Uh, we all know about the Marlboro Man, right? Um, all of them actually died from using a tobacco product. Surprise, surprise, Philip Morris and Marlboro. Um, but this is actually, um, there's, there's an average, this was a long time ago. This is actually in 2013. Um, and you can tell it's a blue e-cigarette considering the blue end tip. And it was only produced once in Vape News Magazine, um, but they actually considered using the Marlboro Man has switched from combustible tobacco products to using e-cigarettes, showing that the e-cigarette company will go to no lengths to promote their products. Using sexuality in ads, um, taking a look at the slides on the left, so and also branding. Um, you can know that that's a blue e-cigarette without seeing the word blue. You can tell by the blue tip. Um, you can also look at go back and look at Cool. You they actually ma manufactured their products so that the two circles in cool interlocked and that was their logo. Just like you can see a Nike emblem and know that that's a Nike shirt without seeing the words Nike, you can see some of these, whether it's an e-cigarette or a tobacco product and know the brand just by looking at the packaging without seeing the name. Sponsorships in music festivals and sporting, sporting events. We've come a long way into, in traditional tobacco control um, to prevent either free sales of um, free samples of tobacco products uh, or advertisements where young adults children under the age of 18 attend um, now we're back doing the same thing with e-cigarette companies are doing the same exact thing they're sponsoring music festivals um, nascar and um, indie car races they're getting their logos and their branding all out there and yes they do hand out free samples of e-cigarette products as well um, in fact i actually work remote um, while Larry said our main office is actually in Austin, Texas, I get to work remotely from home just outside of Nashville. And I had a friend tell me that at one of the bars down in Nashville, they were handing out jewel pods for people to use. So they're still using that marketing tactic. We know that our youth are exposed to advertising. Um, a different ball game this year now with e-cigarettes and Juul and this generation compared to combustible tobacco products is social media. We have huge social media with Instagram and Twitter and I think Facebook's now more for the older kid people but, um, and all those different media venues that are out there. YouTube, I have a nine-year-old son. For some reason, you know, they like to watch those YouTube shows with um, just different families doing different quirky things amongst their family. The shows we approve, but I tell you in the past year, the amount of advertising that's come up is crazy. Um, and he usually yells, he's like, it's just an advertisement, mom. You know, but um, the advertisement that our youth see, especially through social media, has really increased and I believe has been a game changer um, with e-cigarettes and usage amongst our youth. Um, do we have any questions on the on, in the field um, before I just go ahead and go on a little bit further? But I'm happy to take questions as I go along. Yeah, there is one that appeared in the uh, chat box. Uh, do people use e-cigarettes to lose weight, seeing that it contains nicotine? Um, good question. I, I don't know. I, I don't know that answer if they do or not. 
Um, I know with combustible tobacco products, um, the, when they were using combustible tobacco products, it was used for weight loss because it, um, using the combustible tobacco killed a lot of the cells and the taste um, in their mouth, so food just didn't taste as good. Um, I'm not sure if they use it in this regards for e-cigarettes or not. Good question, though. Okay, so taking a look at some basic parts of an e-cigarette. Um, this, no matter what the e-cigarette, the outside looks like, it could be a jewel, it could be a tank, a pod, we're gonna go into some of those later, but no matter what it looks like on the outside, the inside and the guts of an e-cigarette are all the same. It has to have the battery, the heater, which is the atomizer, or, and the cartridge. Um, when I mentioned earlier about the teacher who was very adamant, you know, her, her students were really just doing water and, and flavoring. Um, I had to do some extensive research on that, and that cannot be the case. It cannot just be water and flavoring, and this, this is one of the reasons why. So one is that the liquid, there's not a lot of liquid that's in the e-cigarette, the jewel pod, um, but if you take a look at the heater and the heater coil and how small that is, that would not heat the liquid up hot enough if it was just water to produce any type of a vapor effect. Um, so it has to have other chemicals in there. So I like to use the analogy, if you're cooking a pot of spaghetti and you put just plain, plain, plain pot of water on the stove, it takes a while for it to boil, right? But to want it to boil faster, you know, I always add some salt and you add some um, oil. So the same thing that's in e-cigarettes, the liquid, you have to have other chemicals, there has to be other chemicals in there to get the liquid to heat up hot enough on an inhale to produce a vapor effect. So with that being said, um, it's not really vapor because it's not just water that's being exhaled. It's actually an aerosol that's being that's being exhaled. Um, and that's who, in tobacco prevention and control, we don't refer to it as vaping. I mean, if they want to, they could call it aerosoling. I know it doesn't sound as cool, but if you think of an aerosol and think of it this way, if you're getting dressed in the morning, especially for the women who are using hairspray, you spray your hair and the follicles have to fall somewhere. The particles from that um, hairspray have to fall somewhere. That's the same thing with an e-cigarette. The, the chemicals that come off from the aerosol, they have to fall somewhere. Um, so if you're next to someone who's using an e-cigarette or a jewel, you are being exposed to secondhand aerosol, secondhand vapor that's coming out um, from the uh, e-cigarette. So here are some different types of e-cigarettes, and I'd like to just give a, an overview. It's almost like the evolution of the e-cigarette and where are we now. So in box number one, those were the traditional combustible tobacco products. Um, combustible, combustible, <laughs> original e-cigarettes, sorry about that. Got a little excited. The original e-cigarettes that first came out. So if you look at the first one on the very top, it was made to mimic a, a cigarette. It was slender in design. The color was exactly the same of, an e of a combustible tobacco product. Um, all the ones in the top box are, are disposable. So you buy them, you use them once, and then you throw them out. In box number two, those are the pods, the tanks um, that are used. Those are, I refer to them as the big obnoxious ones that people use. Um, those are the refillable ones. So those tanks can be taken apart um, and refilled with any type of liquid that can go in. Um, and just a reminder that we mean any liquid. So if it's an e-cigarette liquid, um, any drug component that could be put into a liquid could also go into um, a tank or some of the refillable um, e-cigarettes, including THC, um, you know, and other uh, narcotics as well. The next one in picture number three, we'd like to bring this up, but this is the new thing that's out there. Really don't think it's gonna take off too much. That's called the Soren drops. Students often refer to these as the drop. Um, if you've, they're, I've held one before, they're kind of a little bit bigger in design. They're thin and they're smooth, but they're bigger to hold. Um, even in my hand, I couldn't conceal it, so I don't think it'd be as easy for um, students to conceal it but it also almost looks like it could be a nasal spray or a, one of those fancy highlighters. Um, I've also, though, heard stories that some students are using them because of the smooth texture that they're being used like as the same consistency of a worry stone because they're just holding it in their hand and, and playing with it and think it could be a worry stone. Um, and then the big one of the day is just number four that has over 75% of the market share and that's the Jewel. Um, the Jewel pods are the little, that contain the e-liquid are the little cases with the, uh, the colored tips. Um, it is shown there being charged in a USB drive. It is a USB drive, it's being charged in a computer. 
So anywhere you can um, charge a, a USB, you can also charge your Jewel. So if it's um, a portable USB device, you can go ahead and charge it there. Um, so just think of it, students could be charging their Jewel either in their locker room, you know, potentially safely in their backpack, um, also into your TV at home. So a lot of TVs nowadays have the USB um, port so that people can hook up their, t or their phones or their computers to their TV to show videos and pictures of family. Um, you can also hook up your Jewel and charge your Jewel through that as well. Um, this is what's very deceiving. Uh, we've heard of parents tell some stories where they've actually gone and bought their young adult a um, Jewel saying because they needed a um, USB drive for their school to put their paperwork on it. And it's actually not, it's actually a Jewel. So taking a look at some of the flavoring that's out there, um, the flavoring's been around for a long time, unfortunately, and we've been able to take it out of combustible tobacco products as well as spit tobacco. In fact, when I worked in Florida, um, they still had flavored tobacco around for spit tobacco, and we worked with our students to go to um, surveys stores, with the convenience stores within a two mile radius of a school, and to see how many different flavors of spit tobacco there were. Well, when they would come back with 40 to 50 different types of flavoring, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so much. Now we're looking at eight to 15,000 different flavors of e-juice or e-liquid. And everything ranging from any flavor you can imagine, where you see the ones on here, that obviously, although they're not catering to young adults or they're not catering to kids, but you have Fruit Loops and apple juice boxes and slushies, ice cream flavors, donuts. Um, they even have coffee flavors and alcohol flavors. Um, the unicorn puke, which you may be like, what is that? It's part of a video game, so it's named off of a video game. Um, and we know the data shows that 81% of kids who ever used a tobacco product started with a flavored tobacco product. Um, that's why combustible tobacco products, the only flavor that's left is menthol. Spit tobacco, the only flavor that's left is menthol. All the other flavors are not there. But in e-liquids and e-juice, we still have flavoring. Um, one of the things that FDA has done, unfortunately, Gottlieb is retiring or leaving the FDA this year. So um, this month, actually, as much headway as he's made with um, e-cigarette and Juul, uh, trying to get some FDA regulation because of the epidemic that we have with youth using e-cigarettes and Juul. Um, one of the things that he has done is that um, the packaging of the products has changed. So the flavoring is still there, and you can see the flavoring in the top. But if you look at the bottom row, the packaging that was there, um, if you take a look at the treetop, that's actually an apple juice can bought product, and it is a food product. The second picture is an apple juice box. Um, the first picture where it says e-liquid, that's actually an e-liquid box. So it contains the liquid for your e-cigarette. Um, so as it looks similar to a juice box, it's not, it's actually e-liquid. Same thing if you take a look at the slushy container, it looks exactly like a slushy container, but inside it's not a slushy, it's actually your e-liquid. Um, we also have some youth who say, well, there's no nicotine, I don't have nicotine, you know, it's just flavoring. 99% um, of the e-cigarettes sold in 2015 contain nicotine. There are data and research shows that the e-cigarettes that state that they don't contain nicotine, have been found to contain traces of nicotine in the product. Um, if you think about it, why would someone have to use their e-cigarette or jewel constantly? Because you do see them using it a lot. Um, if they're using it in the classrooms, down the hallways, um, trying to get away with it in different areas, they're not addicted to a flavoring, they're addicted to the nicotine component in the e-cigarette. So let's take a deeper look into jewel. So jewel pods have an incredibly high nicotine concentration. Um, and each puff is on par with the puff of a combustible tobacco product. Um, E-cigarettes are known to, especially Juul, is known to contain 5% nicotine, as much nicotine as an entire pack of cigarettes. So if we have young adults, and we do, I've heard the stories of youth doing one, two, up to four pods a day. That's up to a four pack a day smoker. That is scary, and that's one of the reasons why we have this huge epidemic on our hand. I've often often get asked, well, how long does it last? You know, you smoke a cigarette and you're lighting it, so once it gets down to the filter, you know there's nothing left of the cigarette. But if you take a look at the Jewel Pod, it lasts as long as it's charged or until the e-liquid runs out. 
um, what of some of the youth are doing are opening it up and when they refill it they're putting cotton swabs tucked inside the e-liquid so that it gives it a higher concentration and there's more liquid in there to make it last longer um, so the variations of it are extreme to knowing how long it actually lasts but we do know that there's the high concentration of nicotine in it and that's what makes this jewel so um, such the huge epidemic that we have and such the high rate of concern for those in public health um, in fact, over in the, it exceeds the European maximum for nicotine content. So Juul cannot be sold over in um, Europe because of the high nicotine concentration. So taking a look at Juul sales and, and when did it really start? Well, if you remember back when we talked about the National Youth Tobacco Survey in the spring of 2017, you know, it wasn't a popular terminology, the Juul or Jeweling. Um, in fact, in August of 2017, they only had 24% of the market share. You might think that that's high, but by October of last year, they had over 75% of the market share. Um, despite the industry, meaning the jewel industry being in um, constantly in the news, being called out by FDA, public health officials, schools, and school districts, um, they are still now over 75% of the market share. Um, one of the other things I like to mention, too, is that... They've always claimed, Juul has always claimed to be different than the tobacco industry. They're not marketing like the tobacco industry. They they wanted adults to quit using combustible tobacco and go to Juul as a safer alternative. Um, but in December of 2018, just last year, Altria, which is owned by U.S. Smokeless Tobacco, Philip Morris, um, bought out 35% of Juul's market share. So they are now in the business with hand in hand in the same family with the tobacco industry um, and we know as again just some and more information that jewel has been in the media a lot so here are some things to look out for um, throughout the school or within your home that you may see with students um, these are called jewel wraps or skins they can be bought right off at amazon or any other online store um, no sale of purchase for these because you're just buying the wrap you're not buying the jewel products themselves um, but it ranges anywhere from Louis Vuitton to Gucci. You have Marvel Comics. There's no way I could put in all the pictures of what you could design your jewel in. Um, pink camo, green camo. They have pictures of Jesus, but they don't discriminate. They have pictures of Mary, too. Um, I was waiting to go to a conference last year. I was in the hotel lobby, and I saw two young girls walk by with their alcoholic beverage. And the one girl, I'm like, uh-huh, she had a jewel. It was in a jewel wrap. And I'm like, I'm probably the only one that recognized that she had a jewel. I might have been the only one that cared too, but I'm like, there it is, there it is, just walking right down doing it um, in plain sight where it's a tobacco-free environment, but they're able to use their jewel. So I travel a lot. Um, I'm the program for the national program for Catch My Breath. Um, some things to look out for. So on the back of my phone, if you take a look at the picture on the right, on the back of my phone, I actually have a little pocket that I keep my, my driver's licenses in. It's really handy, especially when going through airports. They don't have to go into my backpack and try to dig out where's my driver's license and try to put it back and hold up the line. It's right there. Well, if I had a jewel, I could go, if I was a jewel user, I could put my jewel on the back of my phone and have it nice and handy and not even worry about where it is. Um, the picture in the middle is actually a jewel on a lanyard. Um, I've spoken to, when I've presented before, some teachers say it actually looks like um, one of the microphones that they use in the classrooms. Um, so is it really a, a USB drive that the students have their homework on, or is it actually a jewel that they have hanging, you know, nice and close to their, to their, um, to themselves around their neck? And then just the more organic and, and natural made crocheted versions of the jewel case. Um, some other items that, that they put their jewel in include um, kids will walk down. I've heard stories of young adults walking down a hallway and looking like they're emptying a bag of potato chips, but they actually have a jewel inside the bag, um, and they're using that instead of like a disguise. Um, I've also heard if you see a big Sharpie, one of the big fat Sharpie markers, you can take out the guts and put in a jewel. It'll fit inside there, um, so they actually have it easily accessible there. Um, they use it in their clothing, so they can hold it in their sleeve and just put their mouth up to their sleeve. It could look like they're chewing on their sleeve and they're actually inhaling their jewel um, or even in their shirt, um, where their shirt collar is. Um, they can, and some might ask, well, what about when they exhale, wouldn't we see the aerosol, the vapor that comes out? Um, it, the jewel especially doesn't contain as much of the aerosol effect. 
um, as some of the other e-cigarettes, but there's some things that the students can do. They, they exhale it out, um, and then they can breathe it right back in. So it's called ghosting, so it makes it look like that it never even happened. Um, it is, depending upon how much of a puff they're exhaling out, it could just vanish in the air by the time the teacher were to turn around again. Um, or they're just um, putting the uh, exhaling into their sleeve or into their shirt. One of the other things is that this isn't made particularly for Juul, and it was not designed by Juul, but it's called Vaporware. Um, when I present, I actually have one of these just to show. People think that I just have a you know, fancier sweatshirt on. Um, but actually, I could um, buy the contraption, attach the device to the inside of my sweatshirt, and instead of a drawstring, it's actually a tube that hooks up to my e-cigarette, and I can go hands-free and inhale and um, use my e-cigarette. Um, it could look like that I'm just chewing on my, on my um, drawstring to my sweatshirt. Um, one of the things you can either buy their version and their brand of clothing, or you can buy the apparatus and insert it into your own clothing as well. So you don't have to necessarily buy their products. Um, this is just something to be aware of. It's there. I live, like I said, in Middle Tennessee, and we a few months ago we went out fishing with my son to a lake, uh, local um, state park. And my husband, you know, talking to some other fishermen and stuff. And of course, we're at a state park, so everybody's in athletic wear and outdoor wear. And this guy that they were talking to, I looked over, and I'm like, he's actually doing it. He casted out his fishing line, and he had uh, the drawstring to his sweatshirt in his mouth, and he was using his vapor wear shirt. Um, he was old enough, but still, this is something that's out there, just things to look out for. Um, kids will also be known to try to take pictures of themselves for a while. Um, they had this, uh, Jewel had this thing, do it for Jewel. And if you can get a picture of yourself um, jeweling in the classroom with a teacher behind you and not get caught on social media, you would get certain points. Um, we haven't been able to find that lately, but we I was at a training presentation a few months ago in North Carolina and there was a principal who said that um, one of the students did this in class, not only did it in class, but posted it during class and another student told on him. So students are doing it. Unfortunately, I had another story where there was, it was in Ohio. There was a teacher, he had his students in the gymnasium and all of a sudden they heard this big loud bang and they didn't know what it was. Well, it was a teacher who had gone into the gymnasium bathroom to use her e-cigarette it wasn't a jewel, but it was an e-cigarette, and it exploded in her mouth. Um, so it not only exploded in her mouth, so it caused physical damage to her face um, that she had to have fixed, but then she also lost her job because it was a zero-tolerance school. So with um, the batteries exploding, um, we don't hear of that as much with jewel because of the way it's charged. It's a USB drive, but it's more those other, um, not the disposable, but the other ones that can be rechargeable or you add in uh, you change your battery um, until I guess it was about a year ago um, when I would do my presentations it was only um, operator error all the time the e-cigarette industry never admitted to hey yes I this is a faulty battery we need to recall it um, there's only one company that I know of that has done that and that's RJ Reynolds and it was one battery that they recalled saying it was um, it was a defaulted battery other than that, it's been operator error. So you're not charging it right, you have it mixed in with your coins in your pocket, um, but it's operator error with those. So we know the health effects of e-cigarettes, um, kind of. Uh, we know what um, nicotine does, we know what nicotine does to the brain. We don't know what the other chemicals do. What does inhaling propylene glycol for a long period of time or diceatol for a long period of time do to your lungs? We don't know. Um, we have resocialized e-cigarette tobacco use among our youth because of the e-cigarette. And don't forget, they do sometimes explode. So do we have any questions at this time? There is one question that was uh, asked a little bit ago. Are users able to dab with all four types of devices? Dab meaning use all four types of devices? Um, most likely, uh, is this getting the nicotine fix? I have heard of young adults using multiple jewels at the same time, so putting more than one jewel in their mouth. Um, mm -hmm. But I would imagine that, yeah, if they wanted to, they could use more than one. There was another question earlier as well. Are there any legislative government efforts to curb marketing strategies? 
That's a great question. So we did have, um, that was one of the things that Gottlieb from FDA had p p positioned as well, um, is to the marketing of um, e-cigarettes and Juul um, to change that so that it wouldn't be so marketed um, like combustible tobacco products used to be till we had to pass the master settlement. Um, unfortunately, he's um, you know retiring, so I don't know where that is at this time um, in regards to marketing of the products, uh, but that raises a great question is, Marketing needs to be changed. Um, if we could do anything, we need to ban the flavors of e-cigarettes. That would, the e-liquid, that would really reduce young adults from using and ever picking up this habit. Um, and then what a lot of states and municipalities are doing are raising the age sale of product to 21. So um, there's several states, even this session, that have that on the, the their legislative agenda to raise the age of sale to 21. So you may be wondering, well, what would that do? Well, as, if your current age of sale of tobacco products now and e-cigarettes is 18, you could have an 18-year-old in high school and they would be exposed to the younger students to be able to buy that for them for the younger students. Um, but if it's raised to 21, we hope we don't have a 21-year-old in high school so it bridge that age gap and they wouldn't be access as easily accessible to that. Um, but let me just take that a little step further, is that, well, where are young adults getting their e-cigarettes in Juul? So I've heard anywhere stories from, of course, online. I actually had a story that a student was using a school-issued laptop, ordering his e-cigarettes from a different country, having them shipped at home, and then turning around and selling them back at school. Um, kids are selling them to kids at school, and they can be underage, but they're still selling them to students at school. Um, there can also be, uh, the, going back to the traditional of combustible tobacco products to where you wait outside the gas station and ask an older adult to go in and buy it for you. Um, this actually happened, I forget which state I was in, but they, this is happening frequently outside this one gas station. They couldn't figure out who was doing it. Well. The students were asking a local bum to go in and buy them their e their jewel or their e-cigarette for them, and then they would give the um, bum some extra money to go ahead and do it. So say it cost them $10, say they'd give them $15, and the bum was making money off of it. Well, once that, um, so I don't know if it was some kids or adults who found that out, but they exposed them to the um, retail store, and he's the bum's no longer allowed in the retail store. Um, but kids are getting it, they're selling it to each other, some of the other crazy things that they're doing is renting it during lunchtime. Here you can use my jewel for $10 all during lunch. Um, or oh, you want to just take you know, take a couple hits off it. Well, here's a couple of bucks and you can use it. Um, some of the other things that they're doing with jewel is that they are, you'll have a few friends who have the, um, the main component of jewel. Because about a kit, actually starter kit's about fifty dollars, um, and then the, but once you get the starter kit, you don't have to buy the kit anymore. You just have to buy the pods, and the pods are about fifteen dollars for four. So some kids will just buy the pods, and then they're sharing the electronic device um, to pass it around. So good question. There are a couple. There are a couple of follow-ups to the uh, dabbing component. And one individual uh, indicated, I think DAB relates to THC oil, and another person said, okay. asking about DAB is in marijuana, hash oil, or BHO. Okay. Yes, thank you for that terminology. Um, yes, it can be used, um, and it is. So I was at a presentation. I did a presentation for parents in Tennessee the other night, and this is the scary thing. They had a couple of law, um, people from law enforcement there. So just remember, anything that can be put into a liquid can be put into your e-cigarette or jewel. Um, that includes THC um, and any other narcotic. Uh, we had a student in, I believe it was in the state of Texas, who decided to put a monster energy drink in there. Um, mm. The last time I heard, he was still in the hospital with holes in his lungs um, from the monster energy drink, so you really shouldn't inhale that through your lungs. Um, but regarding the THC, and you know, our program really doesn't cover that because we're nicotine um, derived is where our program starts, but just something you need to be aware of that I was very shocked from the um, law enforcement agencies. So some of the, the jewel pod looking devices that are coming through with the THC are coming over from Oregon and California, and they can have anywhere from 20 to over 70% of THC in each individual one. 
he said that they had confiscated, I think it was like 4,500. They stopped counting at one point because there were so many from one truckload. And there was a variation of content, of THC content, and the level of THC in each different packaging. To compare that, because I don't, I don't know that compared to, uh, to anything else, but he said that comparing that to your, you know, the back in the 60s smoking a joint, a joint was only 6 to 9% THC. So we have 20 to over 70% potentially of THC being in some of these um, pods that contain um, the THC or even the synthetic THC, which is even worse. We need to remember these devices are, in fact, d drug delivery systems. Right. That's exactly what they are. There's another question. What are some of the ways you combat the fact that there isn't a lot of research surrounding the long-term effects? It, it just, um, what, yeah, it hasn't been around long enough yet, yeah. so we don't know. We're starting to see some of these effects and starting to see some of these things. Um, but if you take a look at how long it took us to figure out, you know, combustible tobacco and the health effects of what was wrong with health of, um, combustible tobacco, it just hasn't been around long enough yet. Um, we are seeing, and as I get into the next few slides, I'm going to show you some things that, you know, to look out for in your young adult that could be using, um, you know, what's the sudden change of behavior? Um, why are they suddenly having seizures? Because that report just came out this week, too, um, that there's often seizures associated with e-cigarette or dual use. Um, we, we don't know. It, the data is just starting to come out, and, you know, that's one of the things. That's why it is a public health epidemic amongst our youth because we're trying to get a hold of it. Great questions. Okay, so we know nicotine is addictive. Um, it harms the developing brain. We know the brain develops to the age of 25. Um, we know that youth who use combustible tobacco products or e-cigarettes are more to go, prone to go to combustible tobacco products within um, six months. Um, but again, we know what nicotine does. We know it harms the brain. Um, that you know it controls attention, learning, mood, impulse control. We're all going to talk about that when we look at um, some of these side effects that these kids are having, and to be able to identify is this young adult, you know, why is he in outrage? Is he using a um, e-cigarette? So some of the components that we've talked about a little bit in an e-cigarette are nicotine. There's organic compounds, um, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, lead. Other cancer-causing chemicals, I mentioned diceatol. Um, you may have heard of popcorn lung. Popcorn lung is a real thing. Um, if you've ever bought a bag of pre-popped popcorn, it had to be popped somewhere. Um, well, the people who used to work in the popcorn plant um, were starting to come up with this thing called popcorn lung. Well, when you throw in the popcorn kernels into the big vat of oil, you, they would inhale the steam that came out. Well, they were inhaling diceatol and these other chemicals that the popcorn had gone into, and they were developing this disease called popcorn lung. Well, diceatol is an all-flavored e-liquid as the flavoring um, component to what another, like say, watermelon would adhere to. So that's why you can get the, uh, the flavoring of watermelon. But how we don't know the long-term offense of inhaling diceatol through an e-cigarette liquid into our lungs. We just don't know what these side effects are. And when we talk about adults using e-cigarettes or Juul as an alternative um, to smoking, combustible tobacco products, that even CDC hasn't come out with that yet. And the decision on that that's still out there, there's ideas, to, you know, thoughts in some studies that it could be um, less harm, but not harmless. And when we talk about our youth, I want to tell you that it's all harmful for young adults and their developing brains, their developing lungs and bodies. But if we take a look at less harm and harmless, well, it could be safer to jump out of a three-story building than a 10-story building, but it's not safe to do either one. And that's where we are here. It's just not safe to do either one because we don't know those effects yet that we were talking about. So some of the signs and things to look for um, is irritability, anger, impatience, anxiety. So if you have normally a calm child that all of a sudden has some of these very anxious, um, really um, shortened temper, impatient, um, whether they're in the classroom or at home, um, what's this sudden change of, of mood? Um, well, if they're doing it, they could be doing e-cigarettes or Juul, and that means they are lacking their nicotine fix, and they need to get another hit off of their nicotine. Um, they can't concentrate, so they have bad um, cognitive, cognitive perform and performance impairment, um, which also results into negative change in grades. Um, some of the students that I've talked to, I actually was working with a young gentleman who 
Um, Luca, who spent 39 days in an inpatient rehab, you probably heard about him from using his Juul. Um, he considers himself six months clean, and that's all that he was doing was using Juul. He was a straight A student. He was on his way to be um, Eagle Scout in sports, a very successful young adult. Um, got into doing Juul for a year and a half. Um, ended up, was started to fail was out of scouts, was out of his sports because all he could think about and concentrate on was where his, his jewel fix was coming from. Where's Nick, where was he going to get that nicotine from? He was a four pod a day user. So that's a really heavy user. Um, he was having seizures and doctors were diagnosing him with all these other emotional, social disorders. And really it's, he's been tested since he's been out of, um, rehab and he's fine. His brain synopsis are fine. He's not having seizures anymore. It was strictly the addiction to the jewel that was causing him to have these health effects. Um, so those are just some others. And I'm hearing that story just came out later, and I'll send it out so you guys can all have it. But this came out regarding seizures and using e-cigarettes and jewel amongst our young adults. You know, when we look at cessation, and that is the big elephant in the room, we don't know what the best cessation is for our young adults. And no one wants to put their young adults in a pilot study to see if that's just it, what type of cessation program would work or what type of drug would work to get them off of this e-cigarette and jewel addiction. Um, I do know that Truth Campaign does have a, a text to quit program. Um, but when we see these signs of having seizures, um, stunting the youth growth, I mean, is, is that... Is that our average kid, or are these you know kids that are really high risk and have are prone to these conditions anyway? We don't we don't have that information, unfortunately. Um, sudden interest in burning scented candles or incense. So if you have you know you got a house of boys and all of a sudden they're burning candles in the room, hmm, what are you burning candles for? Um, sudden use of cheap perfume or cologne to cover up the smell of the fruity, right? You've got a big athlete doesn't want to come in smelling like a strawberry or mango, um, so sudden interest in using cologne. It may not be just, oh, they're all starting to take care of themselves. So why are they starting to do this all of a sudden? It could be because they're trying to cover up the smell of their fruity flavored e-cigarettes. If parents are noticing that kids keep asking for another phone charger, what are you doing with all your phone chargers? How could you be losing this many? Um, they may not be losing them. They may actually be splicing them and using them to charge their jewel because jewel can be charged like a USB drive. So they may be um, splicing the wires and charging their jewel. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the Catch My Breath program, and then um, since we got about like 13 or so minutes, I want to get through this, and then we can field some more questions um, at the end. So the Catch My Breath program was designed um, and developed in 2016 because of the two spike in e-cigarette use from 2011 to 2015. Um, the program is for youth between middle and high school at this time, but like I said, we are piloting an elementary program over the in the fall. Um, the program was developed and designed by Dr. Stephen Kelder. Um, he's a professor at the University of Texas Health and who was also one of the senior scientific editors on the Surgeon General's report that came out on e-cigarettes in 2016. And Dr. Kelder is still with us and still heads up our research team and developmental of our program. So right now our program is free thanks to a grant from CVS Health. Um, you may have heard in 2014, CVS Health took tobacco products out of their stores and dedicated $50 million for five years towards youth tobacco prevention. Um, we are funded as part of the Be the First program, so funded with universities like Stanford University, Yale, Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, and the Truth Initiative. Um, our goal was <laughs> originally to reach um, 200,000 kids annually by 2020. Um, I can because in July, that's when the grant ends, although we're in continued conversation with them. I can tell you that right now, just this year, we have reached over 300,000 students. Um, we are in over 1,000 middle and high schools. We are in 49 states. If you are on the call from the state of Delaware, I would love to talk to you. You are the only state that has not implemented our program as of yet. Um, again, this is just all this year, and that's not even can counting the schools that um, continue to plan on implementing um, through the end of this fiscal year. Our program was designed to meet national and health education standards as well as Common Core for middle and high school. And I can tell you no matter what state that you are on, our program meets your state's health education standards requirement as well. We understand that you as teachers have a lot on your plate and a lot of requirements that you have to do. It could be the best program in the world, but if it doesn't meet a requirement, you wouldn't may not actually have the time to implement it. 
our program meets those requirements and if you want more information about that on a specific state please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll be able to help you with that our program was designed on cognitive theory and what are my friends doing uh, oops sorry um, so what are my friends doing so we have four lessons so we have sixth seventh and eighth grade and then we have one for high school currently um, each of the four grade levels has um, four sessions with each of them so we talk about basically e-cigarette 101. What is an e-cigarette? You know, what's the jewel? What do they contain? What are some of the myths? We have talking about skills to resist peer pressure on a whole lesson. It's um, youth, are, youth are talking about, well, if I'm gonna be offered an e-cigarette, where's it gonna be, then how am I gonna say no? Um, and then they break out one step further into one-on-one -on -one role playing and practicing. One's trying to offer an e-cigarette and the other one's practicing the refusal skill. Um, one of the things that I really love about our program is that we have a peer-to-peer -peer component. So while for the majority of the lesson, the teacher facilitates the lesson, we do have a component to where the students break out into their peer-led groups. Um, so peer leaders were picked and chosen by their friends and the, the peers in the class. And they lead these small talk focus groups and we have um, a peer facilitator guide to engage the youth in the conversation. Um, and that's one of the things that our students from the fee student feedback, they really like about it because they feel like they can take ownership of the conversation. Um, and it's a safe environment to talk about e-cigarettes and Juul um, and what it's really doing because they would never have that conversation out in the hallway. Um, we have a whole section on advertising. We talked about advertising a lot in this presentation. We talk about it to our young adults too. You know, what are the different types of advertising? How are things advertised to you? How does the tobacco industry advertise to you? And now how are e-cigarettes being advertised to you in different areas? Um, and then we have them create and do different things. So they create a main memes or hashtags. They do poster and create posters and put them up. A lot of schools put them up as a poster campaign and an awareness campaign on e-cigarettes throughout the throughout the school. Some schools go as far as making videos and having the students post videos on their school's webpage. Um, so we have give those. Our program gives a lot of the hands-on skills. We get a lot of asks. You know, do you have a one-time you know, presentation that we can give to all 500 students. Uh, no, we don't, because our program right now is, is based on socioeconomic, giving the skills, social emotional learning, giving those kids the skills that they need to whether at some time in their life they're gonna be offered something, whether it's an e-cigarette or something else, that they're gonna wanna say no to, and we wanna give them with the skills and how to do that. And then of course, creating favorable attitudes and beliefs about not using e-cigarettes. Uh, talk a little bit about we have four sessions they last 35 40 minutes each um, they're a little varied in time um, we do have each session broken out and we've done the role um, the lesson planning for the teacher um, so some of the things like it takes five minutes to do this the introduction the next five to ten minutes we do this which is great information the teachers really like that because they don't have to worry about creating the lesson plan after seeing our program they can just go ahead and modify the lesson plan as they need to to implement um, so, well, so that's where the variation of the time comes from. Also with the participant activities, that's where the, that's where the um, time frame changes as well. Um, we do recommend teaching one lesson per week for four weeks. Um, while that's the norm of what most people do, we also have um, classes that are in block scheduling, so they do two lessons per week. Um, I've talked about some of the educational strategies that they use. We also have interviews, so the students take home an interview sheet to take to their um, adult in their life and ask them about e-cigarettes and Juul. We do offer a pre and post survey. Um, you do not have to participate in the pre and post survey, but um, I just wanna give you a brief overview of how our pre and post survey is evaluated. We evaluate it as a nation, not as an individual school. Um, so we, and they're completely unidentifiable. So we don't even have one A pre to one A post. It's just 25 kids to the pre, 25 kids to the post. Um, if at any time a school would like their raw data set, they just have to let us know because we understand if the school is going to take the time to participate in the pre and post surveys that they will want the raw data set back um, and we can do that. Um, our class can be taught and originally designed for health education and um, we have a PE component that goes with our lessons as well. So that was one of the things based on our feedback from our pilot program. We had PE teachers that were implementing the program. Our program in the beginning did not have a PE side or any physical activity. Well, now we do. So they can do calisthenics, relay races, walk and talks, all while about learning about e-cigarettes and Juul. It can be really adapted into almost any classroom. 
This is just an overview of what this looks like when you go online to see our actual program. One of the things I want to highlight, because it is all online, once you register, you don't have to wait for a manual to come into the mail. Um, it's completely all online. You have immediate access. Um, is that we have a parent resource section. So you don't have to be logged into the parent resource section to be able to use it. Um, we have created a online uh, downloadable PowerPoint that people, schools can use that other organizations can use to educate parents and other faculty in regards to e-cigarette use um, and you know how they can implement the Catch My Breath program, how they can find out about their school policy for implementation of um, not just the program, but what are what are the rules in using e-cigarettes on campus? This is just a short, simple of what it looks like. If it's highlighted, that means it's either a PowerPoint or a printable page, um, information for you all to use as a teacher or facilitator in the classroom. We do have posters available. Our posters are available for $49 a set. You get a set of 12. What I highlight, while our posters are great and they were actually designed in-house, but they were had um, focus groups from youth who are able to say, yes, this would work best with our peers. Um, I encourage you to use the media campaign and when the youth are creating their own anti-e-cigarette marketing campaign to use your own youth artwork and put that up throughout the school. So we've had great positive feedback from our teachers. They felt that they were, it was culturally appropriate, um, really felt they didn't have to be the uh, tobacco prevention person in order to facilitate the lessons. Again, our students are, um, Really like the program. They are more became more knowledgeable about e-cigarettes and Juul. We've had several stories where youth who, after going through our program, were offered an e-cigarette or a Juul, and they were able to say no because of what they learned. We've been in the media a lot um, since June of last year, starting with Edutopia. We've been on CNN a couple times, CNBC, um, CBS, Axios, and numerous of other stations, even local stations from Charlotte and Memphis over the past two weeks. So our program is in under review, peer review, um, to be evidence-based program uh, for e-cigarette prevention. Uh, so I can't share our full data, but what I can share with you is our preliminary data for our program. If we take all the seventh grade public schools, seventh grade classes in public schools over the United States, there's an average of 192 students. Um, if nothing's done, we project that 17 of those youth, almost a whole class size, We'll try an e-cigarette by the end of this school year. If we implement just the Catch My Breath program, eight of those 17 students, that's 45%, will not try an e-cigarette this year. That's almost 154,000 seventh graders will not try an e-cigarette if we just implement the Catch My Breath program. This is from a senior in high school in um, Illinois who went after going through our program um, at the last lesson. Um, he said that he chose to do it, meaning e-cigarettes, but after recent thoughts and ideas in this class, he chose to stop. Um, so he was able to quit using his e-cigarette device. Simple uh, registration process. Um, once you sign a short form, um, within 24 to 48 hours, you have a welcome email from us with, our, with an access code that's free for you to use um, and does not expire at this time. And that's it. Sorry, I went a little fast at the end. I knew we were getting short on time and I wanted to make sure to be respectful to all of those on the call today. This is Caitlin. Marcella, I know we have a lot of questions in the chat box, so we can try to reach a couple of them, but in case people don't get their questions answered, can they reach out to you? Yes, please do. And my direct, um, contact information, which isn't on here, but you can contact me directly, which is my first name, Marcella, at catch.org. So it's just Marcella at catch.org, and feel free to shoot me an email, and I'll be able to help you. Great. Well, and if you want to filter me with those questions, at the, if, you, if you can get a, a written, if you can print them out and, or send them to me, and I can answer them that way as well. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Marcella, I want to thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. And for those of you who were uh, on this, there will be an evaluation form that uh, you'll be sent so that you can get Chez credit for those of you who need that sort of thing. I would urge you to put your questions into an email and send them or we can pull them from the chat 
box and we will send them to Marcella. Uh, I want to remind everybody that we would hope that uh, this is the kind of webinar that you know you can receive from ASHA and consider becoming an ASHA member because there are many, many benefits. I also want to indicate to put on your calendar uh, this to save the date for our conference, which will be in Cincinnati, October 2nd, the 4th, uh, this, this coming uh, October. Uh, so with that, thank you very, very much, Marcella and everyone. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I hope you've gained from this webinar. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.